All right, hello and welcome dudes and dudettes to Dino Dutt's tips and tricks for small lands. This will help you kind of get through the basics as well as survive and perfect time for tip number one is how to survive a storm. This actually just happened as I was getting ready to record, funny enough. So we'll need some wood and whatnot. Basically what a storm is, it's gonna cause cold and whatnot. It's gonna actually kill you if you're not careful. So you're gonna wanna seek a shelter. Now, luckily, there's some wood down here. That we can go ahead and just snatch up real quick. Just right over here. You're gonna to want to survive a storm, so you're gonna need a building hammer. Build one foundation. Go over to building. Build one wall. And then build any type of roof. This gives you the shelter effect, as you can see right there, next to my hunger in the bottom left. We we'll wait for the storm to break, and I will show you the difference between being outside and inside a sheltered thing. Storms are actually quite serious. They usually happen on your first day of logging in or coming onto the world. At least from what I've noticed in every world I've gone in, they usually come the very first day that you play. Once the storm breaks, as you see, it says remain in shelter, you'll notice your cold bar is no longer comfortable, you're cold. You start to lose health. And once we go in the sheltered effect, we actually start warming up. We don't have to worry about cold. As you can see, it's starting to go back. We're now comfortable and we just wait out the storm. The reason this happens is, I'm not sure actually. <laughs> the shelter effect is actually really nice because it's just kind of like if you play Valheim, you can make basically a small like lean-to like this and it keeps you nice and safe. All right, moving on to tip number two. Tip number two is how to collect things faster. As you saw in tip number one, I kind of just randomly pick things up. But if you actually hold F, you suck everything up near you in at least a two to three step radius of your purse. So if you take one, two, three, it's usually about two or three steps and that's about as far as you can collect things. All right, tip number three. You cannot swim in large bodies of water or any kind of body of water that's super deep. Unfortunately, they don't have swimming. So you might be wondering how to get across water. As you can see behind me, I have a bridge and you don't have to make it like I do. You do wanna put a roof over what looks like the foundations right here because they will deteriorate in a storm. I like to put, these are roofs right here. So you're gonna have to do a foundation, roofs, roof, 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 roof. And you can do another foundation, or I believe you can do all roofs all the way across, but you're gonna have to be careful as your roofs will actually have structural support issues and it will cause issues. The thing about roofs is the fact that they do have structural supports. So I've noticed as the higher you go, like if you go a little higher, they start having issues being able to stack on each other. As you can see right here though, I have been able to do a roof, bottom roof, top roof, bottom roof, top, and it kind of creates like a little added layer effect. I'm not exactly sure how it quite works, but it makes it a nice little bridge across all these water. If you want to go the whole nine yards and make this a nice little safe area in case you're crossing when you have a storm, you could put little walls and roofs at top. It keeps your bridge safe throughout storms, no deterioration damage, as well as giving you a nice sheltered location from the storms. All right, so tip number four is using the sense that you have, the antenna sense. It's very useful, tells you about stones, sprouts, and all that. As you can see, it tells you a lot of things. It also shows you like your structures and stuff in blue. The thing about this is, is it can give quite a few people a headache, and I understand that. But if you can get over that, it's a great useful thing. It also gives you vulnerabilities of insects and whatnot, as well as like one of the creatures I'm not gonna spoil, it actually tells you what it's resistant to with little chunks like a um, one triangle up all the way up to three. Three being the highest level of resistance that it is to specific things. And welcome to tip number five, dudes and dudettes. If you guys like the video, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends and family, and uh, help other people succeed at playing small hands. It's not very hard to play so far. It's a little bit unforgiving, but you know, these kind of tips and tricks are kind of nice. So tip number five happens to be involved in these trees. They're known as great trees and they have a spirit. You can make your tree encampment public or claim. However, when you first run into one of these, it'll tell you you need to climb to the top of the tree. Simply climbing to the top of the tree, following the vines slash mushrooms here. Like if you go around, you'll actually find that there is a way up there. And once you climb all the way to the top, 
you can claim the tree for your own thing. Tip number six is actually tied in with tip number five. Tip number six is once you claim your tree, you get a tree butler. The tree butler is really cool, really outstanding. It's actually pretty crazy. You can climb up to the very top of your tree. And what this is gonna do is create a nice little way, for, instead of going up and down, like you might have already thought you had to do at first when you're first climbing it, you actually don't have to reclimb up or down the tree. Like I said with number five, once you claim one tree, the best part about it is you can go to any other tree and claim it from the bottom. You don't have to climb to the very top. Once you're at the bottom of any tree, you can choose to do that. The only difference is at the top of the tree, you can unclaim your tree. And you can make it private or public so anyone can build up here with you if it's on public and if not, you can just put it as private and no one can build up here with you. Tip number seven survives, or goes, coincides, is what I meant to say, not survives. Coincides with no, tip number six quite nicely, and that is multiplayer functionality of the public trees or private trees. Believe it or not, when you go to someone else's world with your saved character, you go with your armor and weapons so you can actually go help out other players. But that is not the only thing that goes with you. As long as you have a great spirit tree claimed, your house goes to that very tree you've claimed in that player's world. This makes it a very useful thing to bring in materials and stuff if you need someone who has needs help. So for us YouTubers, we can go around to helping our little friends and subscribers and whatnot and making their lives a little bit easier and less hard and more bearable by going in there with what we already have and the knowledge we have as well as the resources and helping them out. All right, and to go with tip number eight, this is more of an intermediate slash mid game uh, I wouldn't say it's late game kind of thing, but mid game is craft the flint sword first. When you find flint, which is a nice black rock near the shores, it actually is more beneficial to make the flint sword first as the things guarding the flint will actually be more susceptible to slashing damage. So my recommendation, make flint sword first and then proceed to move on to the next weapons like the flint pickaxe, the flint axe and all that kind of stuff. All right, and tip number nine is, in my opinion, I would avoid the darkness. The darkness is very unforgiving, and it has new bugs and creatures that spawn that will come at you relentlessly. Those nice little ladybugs you saw, while they look nice during the day, they actually have night variants that will actually hunt you down. Same with ants, and so on and so forth. So, my next tip for tip number nine is avoid the darkness if you can until you're better geared. My next tip is tip number 10, and that is utilize your storage space. It is very beneficial, dudes and dudettes, to make storage chest. As you can see, your simple storage chest right here have only nine, well, has 12 slots, excuse me. While you, when you get the chance, you wanna make the wooden chest, which has an abundantly more slots. It has eight more slots to be precise, and it is very useful. As you have limited inventory, you definitely want to go through and make more chests. Also remember to keep consolidating and moving inventory around to kind of keep things a little bit nicer and less sloppy. All right, tip number 11. While you can eat edible mushrooms singular, it only gives six nourishment at a time. Biggest recommendation is to make the mushroom steaks. It costs three and it is a little bit more to make it. However, you will actually get 12 more nourishment as well as blocking your nourishment loss for 180 seconds. That translates into three minutes. So it is very beneficial to go through and make mushroom steaks, as well as any other type of food you can, as they all have a three minute blocker and gives you nourishment that makes them very, very well worth it. And my last and final tip for now, tip number 12, is kind of a self-explanatory explanatory tip. Don't be afraid to explore. There are gonna be things that are gonna kill you. It is easy to recover your graveyard things or your tombstones. But just go out and explore and have fun. This game is amazing. It is absolutely fantastic. And it's going to give you a lot of fun. While it is only early access, I do think it's worth it. And it actually, in my opinion, has more content than Grounded did when it first came out in early access. I actually joined probably about six to eight months later when it first came out. And I do feel like this game has more to it than Grounded did at first. While I'm not knocking Grounded anyway, this game is a good fit for you if you enjoy Grounded. And that's why I'm saying that you should just kind of enjoy the game and relax and have a good time. It's it's a game. It's what we're here for. But anyways, dudes and dudettes, if you guys like the video, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends and your families. Catch me in my first ever playthrough of Small Lands here soon. And we 
We'll see you, dudes and dudettes, in the next video. Stay classy. Thank <laughs> you.